Yo, what's up, everybody? This is Mark Shapiro, and welcome to episode 176 of Are You Being Real? I am fresh back from an epic three-week adventure that took me to Greece and to Israel, and I have so much creativity flowing, lots of things I'm very excited to share with you, which I'll do in the coming weeks, but uh, I'm honestly still processing it all and getting back in the flow of being home. So we've got a really cool episode for you today, which is all about light and dark, which uh, is that duality that we all experience in life. And uh, I talk to people for a living as a coach and just as someone who loves to dive in deep with people, I've noticed there are a lot of people that have faced a lot of challenges this year and that this year has been uh, tough. It hasn't been all fun and games, but there's been some challenging things that, uh, that people have gone through, myself included. So this episode today is going to be in two parts. In the first part, we've got an awesome mashup that includes some of the most real moments from uh, several of the last episodes that we've had on Are You Being Real? I went back and I picked some of the rawest, best storytelling and just vulnerability, and I picked it, and then I worked with Franco, who's uh, on my team with me, to create this awesome mashup for you today. Franco did an awesome job, and uh, excited to share it with you. So that's going to be the first part. And then the second part is going to be an excerpt of an interview I did on the One You Feed podcast, where I talked about my good wolf and bad wolf. There is this parable that we all have a good wolf and a bad wolf within us. And the one that's victorious is the one that we feed. So uh, this episode is all about the light and the dark. As I mentioned, that as individuals, we all have ups and downs, highs and lows. And it's a big part of our shared humanity as well. And oftentimes we keep some of that darkness to ourselves. And uh, to me, that's a big shame because If we don't know what's going on with one another, we can't really understand each other and best support each other. So it's a big part of our mission at Are You Being Real to bring the realness, to shine a light on all the good, all the fun, as well as on some of the challenges as well. So we can uh, work through them in the most smooth and effective and collective way possible. So that's what is in store for this week. And as I mentioned, there's so much creativity flowing through me right now. And a big part of our mission at Are You Being Real in this world that's really starving for honesty and for connection uh, with so much loneliness and fake news and all that stuff that we see on a daily basis, that we really want to create a platform that showcases realness, people standing for what they believe in, and just being open and uh, leading with their hearts. So If you happen to come across any articles, whether on the internet or social media that you feel are on brand for Are You Being Real and that are inspiring and raw and open, feel free to tag us in those. We'd love to uh, see how people are opening up and then aggregate and really create a platform with uh, amazing stories that uh, allow us to really celebrate our shared humanity and to learn from one another and to empathize with one another and to support each other. So on that note, it is time for this episode about the highs and lows, the ups and downs of life, how to deal with them. And uh, here it is, episode 176 of Are You Being Real? I am so far from perfect. I make mistakes. I contradict myself. I I'm just as lost as everyone else. And I'm just trying to be what I want to be. I think for my entire life, for different reasons at different times, I felt like I don't belong. Coming out of special education and and making up a story about myself that I was, you know, retarded and dumb and all the other stories I had about myself. My entire upbringing, I identified as being shy and struggling no. with mild social anxiety. Really? Absolutely. I used to feel invisible. I remember walking through the hallways at school feeling like a ghost. I was avoiding myself. I care so much what other people think about me. This has been the most challenging time in my life. The most, you know, I've had challenges. I've had shit. I've lost my house. I've been homeless for a mm-hmm. short period of time. I've lost Sexual all my money. Abuse. Sexual abuse as a child. And I also, the Me Too movement, I'm certainly a part of that. Yeah. Um, there was a story in my head going, nobody wants to hear your skinny black ass. Now I'm in this like perpetual downpour of sweat. I'm freaking out. I'm in my head. I'm heading to the bathroom and I'm looking at myself in the mirror. I'm like, you need to chill out. Like, do not blow this massive shot. <laughs> you know, reality hits you. And reality, you know, to my surprise, was hitting me much harder than I expected. And I was like, wow, it probably would have been a lot fucking easier if I had just done this two weeks ago. And like, I started to feel hypocrisy. I started to feel like I was out of integrity with my message still overly worried with what people thought of me. If people find out who I really am, 
they're not gonna love me and they're gonna know that I don't belong. It was this eight month quest of just getting beat up at every turn. Look, I didn't want to bother him. I don't want to be that guy. And he's like, dude, are you fucking kidding? <laughs> like, just go say something. It almost felt like, you know, I was laying down on a road just so a, a truck could run me over, reverse and run me over some more. Oh no, my life doesn't mean anything. Yeah. And, and I'm gonna die. I don't know when to fucking let it go. I don't know, it's, a, it's my biggest lesson. I'm mm -hmm. still trying to figure it out. You know, like why the fuck did this happen to me? What I realized is that I've been putting myself in the jail all along mm. through that addiction and through the story I was telling myself that I wasn't good enough or worthy and I needed to be thin or I needed to accomplish more and this super drug was going to help me get there. But like I lost it all because I was drunk and naked having fun on a beach yeah. and it all got taken away, like my entire yeah. identity. Mm. And it was this moment, you know, when I was standing there, I realized, whoa, I'm I'm dying in, with my gift still inside. I'm not facing myself. I'm ignoring. I'm numbing. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, the general theme was even though I was so su successful and doing everything I thought I was supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. I was empty on the inside. Wow. And rather than turn toward these uncomfortable feelings that I didn't know how to navigate, I just numbed them. I had no idea at the time that I was, you know, on this mission how much those insecurities were fueling my sometimes irrational behaviors. And it was the first time in my life that I got to shut up my brain and just accept this love and say, you are, you're doing what you're supposed to be here, the way you're here to do. It's like you are loved and admired by the people that mean the most to you. And it was this new understanding of, of purpose. And I just realized that if I can just do that, that I will live a full life. I'm, I'm just curious. I'm curious and and I give a shit, you know? Yeah, right. Like if this is all I contribute to the yeah. world, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I think we gotta like kind of not listen to what people say about it, you know? It's really like kind of tapping into what we want, who we are, not listening to the noise, you know? We're all kind of representing ourselves inauthentically. I found that there is no authenticity and we're all one big melting pot. And that to me is fascinating. That to me actually gets me excited about who I get to become. Because in knowing that there is no such thing as authenticity, except for what I wanna be, yeah. I get to become authentic in the process. Because if you wait around with an identity that you don't necessarily like and it eventually disappears, how, how mad at yourself are you gonna be that you wasted all that time in the first place? Because all we have is this yeah. time. I'm the most famous artist. If you Google who is the most famous artist, that's me. <laughs> you know? I'm basically sitting there, I throw water in my face and I'm just like, chill out, dude. You got it. It's like, I think I'm a badass. Like, I, yeah. I really like myself. I'll second I... that. Such a hard question for you to answer, but there is no such thing as authenticity, and that's why I love what you're up to, which is like trying to get to the essence it's... of like what it means to be real. Hi, Mark. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Eric. It's an honor to be here. Let's start like we always do with the parable. There's a grandfather who's talking with his grandson. He says, "In life, there are two wolves inside of us that are always at battle. One is a good wolf." which represents things like kindness and bravery and love. And the other is a bad wolf, which represents things like greed and hatred and fear. And the grandson stops and he thinks about it for a second. And he looks up at his grandfather and he says, well, grandfather, which one wins? And the grandfather says, the one you feed. So I'd like to start off by asking you what that parable means to you in your life and in the work that you do. It's a great parable and I, I absolutely love it because it really rings true for me. I'm someone who's very tough on myself and for a lot of my life, I would constantly be feeding the bad wolf and would neglect the good wolf. Even on a good day, I find that my bad wolf still shows up from time to time and with the light comes the darkness. So. When I'm feeding my good wolf, Eric, I feel free, I'm in service and in contribution to others, I'm giving, I'm fun actually, carefree <laughs> and sometimes bold and you know, operating from my heart. And the bad wolf uh, is definitely the side of myself that I don't love to see the light of day, like I don't love for other people to see the bad wolf. The bad wolf is kind of a loner and angry and feels like an outsider and unappreciative and I'm a taker and operating from a 
place of fear and jealousy. And as I mentioned before, hypercritical of myself. So big, big difference between the good wolf and the bad wolf. If you notice you're in that bad wolf, do you have any ways that work for you to flip it around? Or is it sometimes just a mood and you, you roll with it? Or what do you do? <laughs> sure. Well, I'll start out with what I used to do. And I would just continue to feed the bad wolf and just continue to get lost in that spiral of stories that didn't serve me. So now when uh, the bad wolf starts speaking to me, which it does on a daily basis, sometimes uh, I'll stop feeding it immediately, so that usually works. It's easier said than done, but what I'll find is when I first hear that bad wolf speaking to me, I'll first acknowledge it and then kind of look at it from a 30,000 foot view point of view and be like, is this really what's real for me right now? Let's look at the rest of the picture because generally speaking, you know, the sun is still coming out on that day. There's still so much to be grateful for. So when I can catch that bad wolf early, I find that's the best way of circumventing going down, you know, the rabbit hole. But I also find, Eric, that, uh, with that darkness, there's so much room for opportunity and for growth. So on days when I'm feeling like I'm working my butt off, but it's not working the way that I want it to work, and I'm feeling a sense of doubt or fear or anxiety, I'll take that opportunity to look within and be like, what in this moment can I do to um, really aid that fear and that doubt? And oftentimes, that will incentivize me to have an incredible brainstorming session with myself where I'll write down a list of maybe 10 things that I know that I could do that would support me that I just haven't done yet. And I find that that really serves me. Hmm. Question for you about gratitude, because it, it, yeah. gratitude is one of those sure. things that's, you know, everybody talks about it these days. And I've been very focused on doing a daily gratitude practice. And one of the things that I run into is just days where I just don't feel very grateful for anything or that yeah. I'm just curious if you have that sort of thing and, and how you, what you try and do to uh, snap out of it, if, if that is happening, or if maybe that's just the nature of when you do something every day, there's, there's days where you're more into it and other days and that you're not. And the, the important thing is to do it. Uh, both really resonate with me with what you said. Some days I am focusing on everything I'm grateful for, you know, the roof above my head and all these incredible relationships in my life and the fact that my commute in Los Angeles is from my bed upstairs, downstairs, like I'm, I have it so good. And so some days I can really, you know, feel that and get in touch with that and other days, like even today, I woke up with a little anxiety. I had a lot on my plate today. I was a little nervous about coming on this show. I've been really excited about this day for a long time. But there are some days as well, Eric, like as you alluded to, where I find myself in my head intellectualizing my gratitude versus really feeling it in my heart. So I usually call myself out if I notice that I'm kind of coming from that place where it's just another item on my to-do list. So I find that that works. Not every time, though, to be honest. Yeah, there are times for me, I've been thinking lately about the concept of moods versus emotions. And it just sometimes seems like, at least for me, like I've got a mood system and there's just certain moods that I get in that I don't know that they're tied to anything very deep emotionally. I don't know that there's, I don't know there's a lot to be done with them sometimes. I mean, I know the main things for me is, you know, to be moving and to exercise and to eat well and to meditate that all those things help manage my mood. But I've been just yep. kind of kind of recognizing sometimes like, well, I'm in a down mood or a slow mood or a, you know, a big part of me is just learning to relax with that a little bit and, and think of it kind of like the weather, like the weather comes, it goes, it changes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean a whole lot. Again, I'm not talking about anything that's pathological or, you know, cause I've mm -hmm. suffered from deep depression before, but it's more just sort of rolling with those things a little bit more and and less feeling like I'm failing if I'm not always in a happy, you know, go get a mood. And and so, right. you know, I just it's something that has been on my mind lately. Uh, for sure. I, I know exactly where you're coming from. I had a few weeks where I was I hit episode 100 of the one and only and I made more money in 10 days than I had ever made in a month in my corporate job at Showtime. So that was really like a huge feat for me. Yet at the same time, I 
was just scared and unfulfilled and felt all this pressure with this kind of new normal. And I found myself feeling a lot of anxiety and heaviness and then was judging myself for it. And what I found is that I just needed some time to adjust. Yes, I created everything I wanted, but it was a little overwhelming at first. So once I was able to kind of turn down that volume and adjust to this new normal and realize that, you know, I'm doing my best, I realized, wow, I get to have fun with this. And the second that I allowed myself to see that and feel that, everything shifted. And during those dark windows, like I'll meditate and oftentimes I'll still have action items on my to-do list, but there's dark days. Like dark days are absolutely inevitable. Everybody feels them. And you know what I've learned, similar to your analogy with, with the weather, that they, they come and go. And consistently over time, I, I tend to have more sunny days than dark days. And something that, that I love to share is you know, we're human beings. You know, we, we struggle. That's a, a part of life. A lot of it is uh, self-imposed. But as long as we're going to feel that anxiety and stress in our lives, we might as well feel that and accomplish our goals and leave, live the life we want to live versus just feel that anxiety and that stress and live a life that is just good enough. We're only on this planet once. We have limited time. So I always encourage everybody, no, don't settle for good enough. If there's an opportunity to chase a dream, then go for it. And that doesn't have to mean to quit your job. But at the end of the day, we want to feel like we're here for a reason. We want to be seen. We want to feel like we made a difference and that we mattered. And the way to really matter is to make a positive impact in the lives of others. (laughs) 